Good day everybody and welcome to yet another episode of Unleash with FTM. Unleash with from the expert's mouth. And today we have the second part of the double bonanza for you. Our special guest in this episode is Suprabha Jha, an educator and a serial entrepreneur comes social entrepreneur. We learned about her thoughts on education and learning in the previous episode, the part one of this discussion. Watch the previous part in case you missed out on it before heading into today's episode where we will focus on entrepreneurship and social entrepreneurship. That also connects with her journey in the field of education. So let us dive deeper into the how and why of Suprabha's journey. So Blue Orange has published 80 uh, products and various programs altogether. And this journey uh, once continued. Uh, unfortunately, I started with a lot of zeal of changing things and working. But I never understood that as a woman, there will be many cha uh, challenges for me as a woman entrepreneur. So, you know, right from the industry where um, it's a male dominating industry of print, uh, uh, to take a young girl as a serious uh, entrepreneur was a difficulty. And with time, somehow in 10 years, it happened that I started with a strong why, but I, I ended up juggling with a lot of, you know, business tactics, you know, that payment and this and that. And then I realized that it is not easy for a woman to operate at an entrepreneur level, you know, to stand out. And, and not only as a woman, I would feel that such a certain times it happens when you take a journey, a strong, powerful journey, you will get into such kind of uh, deviations and struggles where somehow you may get deviated, you know. But I never did because the moment I did, I felt that I'm getting into another struggle. I paused. I took a step back. And in 2017, we launched a program under, uh, you know, Blue Orange called as Bharatan Parivartan. We, we had by then a complete team. We had all products ready. We were in a proper system. So we started the same program, same products for underprivileged. And we launched Bharatan Parivartan with preschool under the bridge in Delhi. Okay. With 220 children. That was some of the accomplishment for me where I felt contented to be a teacher where I felt, okay, life is really meaningful. If I can make something which is which can change people's life or give them a learning, this is what I wanted to do. From 2017, Blue Orange, of course, as our business was going on, but my whole focus was designing programs for teachers who are giving time for underprivileged children, who are giving their heart and everything, and also designing programs for their children. So from 2017, the journey started with social sector at very personal level not in a social sector and the journey had been going on so 2020 uh, i'm sure everybody was in a state where beautiful time of introspection asking ourselves with no connections and that time i decided that now is the time that i choose one part you know of not struggling on the numbers of turnover but rather working for the cause which gives my soul satisfaction, which is my real calling, which is my real purpose, which is my real why. So I started Growth Gurukul Learning Solution and the foundation. And now we are working entirely with privileged children, but connecting them with underprivileged as well. So we are designing courses and every resource for emotional intelligence, value, culture, learning skills, but in a way that they are connected with both parts of the society at the similar level. Right. That's what the journey is. It's often said that the roots of what we want to do, what we are good at, and what is our calling, go back to our childhood experiences. Absolutely. Right? In your case, you know, both based on your personal experience as well as what you've seen, how have you seen this pan out, you know, this uh, need to change the world and change the way, you know, children are educated? Does it go back to some of your uh, early experiences of childhood? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I belong to Aliga, uh, a city in, in UP. And, you know, uh, in, in our times, uh, in 90s, a uh, child speaking English was something very respectable. Mm -hmm. You know, in our times, when, when if some, some child speaks very good English, we were called by parents, listen, listen, the child is speaking this, you know. Okay. And, uh, and a city of UP usually do not have a bookstore. Book reading 
was not something very common in area now we have we do have so there was a lot of things which were missing in a city mm-hmm. but but it doesn't mean that it, it was not important yeah it it was never that schools were not providing it schools had library so they were there but how much are we using it as a life skill was absent we knew the importance but to use it as a life skill was a you know mismatching somewhere i was an icc student i loved poetry we had this flights of fantasy book reading about john milton wordsworth and o henry's stories all this was so fascinating because it took me from a place of my own home to a, a to a space where somebody who was so scholarly intelligent made me move cry or some you know could touch my heart in a way i always felt fascinated that books books make so much of meaning because they can take you everywhere without any passport right you know and that that thing i took it with me but when i went to 11th and 12th i did it from chennai and salem uh, the reason being aligarh never had any english medium school for 12th standard and uh, i was not supposed to go to any hostel so i went to 11th and 12th personally and when i went to 11th and 12th i give so much of you know gratitude to divine because if you want to understand india travel right. travel meet people same syllabus same cbsc same curriculum what is that that differs in people when i went south it was entirely different with respect to how teachers are how to i'm not saying good or bad yeah. i'm saying how their culture was integrated with the uh, learning you know right. a child walking ball without because he has given a hair at tirupati and because for one month he'll not be wearing a shoe in a school was highly respected you know so those cultural things two years changed my perspective entirely that what we understand knowledge or poising or posing or presenting ourselves as a person at is a very superficial level right but when as a person i carry some designation or something at my shoulder it is my own energy which will reflect and energy cannot be by my clothes energy cannot be how good i am at my vocabulary energy will always be on my belief system my knowledge system how i connect my value and my knowledge together so i move from there and and then i you know imagine i move from chennai a culturally rooted place straight to lsr that was lady shram college in delhi and i join lsr as a mass honor student god i immense exposure as delhi university provides you and uh, i am myself a mohan veena player and a tabla player so i connected at music level i connected with a lot of variety of people who were not of my department and i felt that when you connect with people it cannot always be on your academic level it can be at any level so i understood how music has helped me how my communication has helped me how my adaptability to a culture has helped me all these experiences really made me feel i might not say i am a very successful person in the really in the related terms of how we mean successful but i do feel that i am a person who can understand people would like to understand people and right. work with them to help them harness their true potential it may be elders yes of course entirely children because children are very accepting and very very ready all the time to grow so this how this is how you know my whole journey of traversing uh, places and understanding and, and then i established that okay uh, i have a lot of things to think about let me extract let me connect and start working first with the most important change maker in the society that's a teacher right. teacher is the biggest change maker in the society because she makes the change makers right you know? so if i say i am a teacher i have a whole responsibility of not a subject i am dealing with humans right and humans of tomorrow so i started working entirely with so the whole my journey my childhood my experiences that have always been the base of me thinking further uh, ahead that okay this is how it is happening and even today even today when i think about something i do relate to the how my teachers did it how how we did it when net was not there how are we engaging so if we were engaging can we design some product for children today 
So definitely, it always past is past, not to be remembered, but definitely learnings of past are the base of your future. I do believe that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And I think you know the way you've gone about your uh, life and early stages of your career. I think you've maybe consciously or subconsciously exposed yourself to very different environments. You know, yes. north and south, of course, is one dimension. The other dimension also is the kind of uh, subjects that you've studied. Like, you know, on the one hand, you were a science student and on the other hand, uh, you're studying, you know, music and playing different instruments. Uh, and then I believe you were also preparing for the uh, IES and the administrative yeah. services, yeah. right? So, yes. uh, that's like, and in a very different uh, subject choice also, right? Yes. So, I had sociology and public administration. Right, there you go. So, you know, you have three completely and, uh, you know, contrasting kind of uh, streams. So, was that a conscious choice? Was it a need for you to understand at a deeper level by exposing yourself to different environments? Or, you know, was it just uh, serendipity? And now that you look back and you reflect, you realize that, okay, because I did these three totally different things, I am a, you know, more uh, wholesome person or my ability to think and connect with a broader set of people. Uh, is uh, has been enhanced. So there there have been few conscious choices as well, but I tell you, if you see as a child, and that's how I, I'm designing programs now. My guru uh, of my music guru, that is uh, Ustad uh, Shumshuddin Sheikh sir, uh, he was a blind teacher. He was blind. He was double MA in Hindi and music, and uh, I was uh, ten years old when I joined music with him. You see. Uh, I, that's not my conscious choice of my teacher uh, being a blind, you know, or me joining just a blind teacher. But when life puts you into certain things, what happened? I was the first student who was very excited to go to the center and do the grooming, clean, the, clean every instrument. I was supposed to learn one instrument. But putting my son's gaddi, helping him get down from the rickshaw, giving him the water, he, I, I'll ask you that... What do you think? How do you see a child when they hold the hand of a grandparent walking and you are just simply walking? What do you think? The first thing is that what the child is so good. So right. respected. You know, this is something like that. But uh, of course, now we are into nuclear families and probably not exposed, exposed to the talented, uh, you know, music classes or su certain things in a certain way, in a curriculum way. But life skills or choices, conscious things are there. But it Consciousness also is highly driven by your a subconscious things, you know, con things which is just flow in your life. Right. You know, understanding how he'll be doing, understanding then when, when he used to write guzzles, you know, how he used braille. And he asked me to do the sangat with tabla, you know, right. and he reading like this, that was something that I probably now, of course, I look back and I feel. But that excited me to see him very closely. How is he learning? Right. What is making him so excited to learn and learn and write and do double MA? You know, it's not that I I ever felt that he's having less. Yeah. I never felt it that way. Oh, he does not have he's a blind. How can you do? Then I can also do. No. I just felt that he has something extraordinary within him. And if he has, then we have to recognize that each one of us has it. You know, yeah. so uh, with the flow of life, I have been blessed and I'm sure everybody's blessed. It is just that, do you recognize? For me, it has been, I did my graduation in music, so it has been a long journey. But I tell you, even a small instance of life can be very powerful for you to shift. Right. And every human being does have those experiences it is just that do you give the children that sight you make them see important is to give them that sight that they that they recognize that they tell you that mama it's like that you know for me the similar journey happened and so the, the when the journey happened a lot of things happened i was also very emotional you know going to south putting a flower in my hair was not very normal for any U U Uttar Pradesh girl I was very reluctant to do that. But when understanding the understanding what the culture was, what was that relevance of being ready for the temple? So all those experiences, a uh, cellular level, 
they they program you. Chill childhood always programs you and makes you Rajiv and Suprabha, you know. And I also today as an educator, right, fifteen years back, I very well decided consciously that every child is getting programmed. You know, I became something like that when I'm when even in my birthdays of my children, I used to feel that my children are doing this, so it's going to go well. Something like that started happening in me. You know, so I always felt that. every child is getting programmed in their environment if it at my level i'm not talking children are the only of my society at all anybody for that matter underprivileged i never i use the word underprivileged because of because they are not privileged in the society for something but i have highly high respect for them because in a very limited resource i tell you i mean this i really wanted to share i have interacted with so many children of poorest of the status but when you talk to them about dreams they might not have been exposed to anything but their dreams are as big as anybody can be so you know when a human mind has the capability of thinking biggest right. then it, it, the only thing is harnessing their potential right and that gave me the purpose of all my childhood everything of course of course everything has programmed me in a level that i could find my purpose slightly late i do feel i could have done it a little earlier also but yes still uh, nevertheless i'm very happy that whatever change i can do with the partnerships of people also i am ready to do that and yes i have lot of gratitude for all the experiences of my childhood right I do yeah no that's uh, that's fascinating and i think these experiences that we have the programming that is there you know whether conscious or subconscious most of us uh, you know just live our lives without thinking very deeply about you know these aspects which define us define the core of who we are and yep. probably will lead us to the right answer in terms yes. of our why or our calling but Absolutely. if you ask a normal person on the street you know what is their calling uh, if they are in the you know middle of their work week they will probably zap you know where is this even coming from and you know i think it goes back to what you were saying about uh, you know thinking uh, the ability to slow down to reflect to introspect and to think deeply about what is my programming who am i at the core and what is my superpower you know everybody has got that uh, some superpower or the other even and, if you know through let's say the privileged people in society we are looking at uh, so called underprivileged people they also have uh, superpowers you know uh, the blind uh, music teacher that you mentioned yeah. and yeah. your amazing superpowers uh, you know you mentioned about how you would define uh, success but i think a uh, unidimensional way to look at success only from the perspective of you know a professional career or uh, you know the monetary gains that we make uh, is a very very narrow sort of view because you know if you define success as being able to understand who you are why you want to do something and do it and do it then uh, i would imagine that you should consider yourself to be you know as successful as anybody else yeah absolutely yeah so you know speaking of that uh, uh, and particularly your uh, you know social entrepreneurship uh, journey so uh, what is it that drove you into this and uh, you know what is your experience been of dealing with uh, underprivileged children and you know, connecting them with uh, the privileged uh, lot because most often what we find when these sort of initiatives are taken is they are taken in a silo so you know when you are let's say doing some social service or an ngo is embarking on some initiative they are only and only focused at an underprivileged section in isolation so you kind of uh, got them to connect with uh, the other aspects of society so how was that experience and uh, you know what did uh, you learn out of it so you know social work or uh, social entrepreneurship or working in the social sector it never started at a certain moment of time it was always there in me you know like i said that uh, i was uh, used to spend more time in school as a child and i used to spend more time in uh, with my ayas when my mom was working in office so being with them so i'll tell you my first social project so there was a lot of uh, around 10 to 12 ayas who used to take their salaries and when they used to come to the salaries they used to use their thumb Uh, while they took the salary in cash that then cash was there so that was my first social project because i had no students that time school was empty my friends were my ayas ayas amma we used to call them amma 
And uh, so I used to use that khadiya, that chalk. And on the floor while they were eating, I used to teach, uh, I was in grade seven then. I used to teach them to write their names. Right. You know, they all knew how to make rangoli. Right. So sketching around was not a new thing for them. Right. All I knew, all I had to teach them that the round has to start from somewhere and close up. That's right. how I felt. And that's how I started teaching them. So I tell you, even today, I might have done some good works in life, but my biggest success was when first time they came to take the salary after my teaching, every one of them put aside the thumb, that pad, and took the pen to write the, their name. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you something very divine if you believe that. My first Aya who wrote the name, her name was Saraswati. Okay. <laughs> and she was the first one to write that. And, you know, when you, as a child, I did not know I, I was doing something great. I just loved the game teacher, teacher. Yeah. No. So I did it. But the kind of shift which I felt at that time when she wrote and when everybody looked around and they were like, what did you do? And right. then I got an award for it in my school. This whole thing is like a project of life. You can scale this project at the highest level, which I'm doing even now. Right. Create, create things from their experiences, help them to get empowered, make them so empowered and give them an opportunity where people recognize them, recognize me too, because I am the change maker who can do it. Appreciate my efforts because I need more people to scale. See, I'm, I'm just taking that project and just scaling it up. Right. You know, so this is what whole entrepreneurship was all about. And that was the only reason. So, you know, UPSC choice was never that I was very fascinated to be a district magistrate or a Lal Bhatti or a Neeli Bhatti, nothing like that. Right. Never. Uh, that might be for my parents. You know, yeah. that, you know it's called that Saat Pushte Ban Jati Hai, it's a civil servant. Thing. But that was never for, my, for me. For me was that this lot of 12 ayas, then why not move? Bada right. maza aega because we, we belong to a city. But bada maza aega when you work with those environment. Because they used to share their stories of their gang, their village, how it is. So that's how social work came in me, in me. And Blue Orange was also similar start. Yes, I could not go straight to the grassroots because I was not equipped, well equipped and well supported like that. I had some limitations, but I started with that only. And in 2017, the moment I felt that I am equipped now, I immediately started Bharatan Parivartan. I never thought of opening a non-profit or an NGO because it was not a structural thing in me. I did it in a very natural, organic way. Like you said, you know, it, if it is important to be structural at a certain time, I'm sure it has to be to scale up. But when it flows, it just flows Right. Even when I started Bharatan Parivartan, the major cause of doing it was that when I looked from my office, I said, I have everything, but where is my wife? Yeah. Am I losing it? So let's operate. But I tell you, I took whole team. I could have easily taken interns. I could have easily taken, I did take many interns to do the program because it was a huge program. But my biggest intern in that time was my office boy. You know why? Because he had come from a gown. He knew the value of what we were doing. Right. You know, so you may get skilled people in your team, but please get those people who have, who understand the value of what you're doing. If as a leader, I am able to create that why in everybody, there is no nothing stopping us from doing the biggest or impossible things in life. When we did Bharatan Parivartan, my every team, you know, my graphic designer asked me that, ma'am, what will I do? Because she was a, a software person only doing designing of a book. I said, I just said to her, come, it's once in a lifetime experience. Second time, don't do that. But see, her every design of every worksheet was being done by the children there. And that shifted her. We as a human, as a school, as a leaders, in whatever position we are, we need to shift the people we are leading with, team we are making with, 
and we have to foster them to see the purpose you know it's very beautifully defined by sadhguru as well that per, when you say i have a purpose it cannot just be i right. a purpose is a purpose when there is other mm. so in every purpose it's me but it is the other person as well right. that is the purpose of life yeah. so i always had that uh, at very limited level whatever i could do whatever i'm able to do but only thing is i i just feel happy that my intentions are intact struggles have been more challenges have been hard women entrepreneurship is difficult people have really given me hard time in many day, many many ways but still one thing which they could never defeat or i could save by all my practices is my true intention right and that shall be my journey till the last yeah well that's that's great and you know we often talk in abstract terms about you know following your passion and you know yeah leading with a purpose and understanding the why but i think the kind of examples that you've given you know particularly of the office boy yeah. uh, you know that's a classic example of somebody who resonates with the why mm-hmm. and is able to do unbelievable unimaginable things and if we are able to you know rally people around not our why but their why connected to you know what we are building i think that's the way to go rather than just making it about ourselves coming back to learning uh, i also like the example that you spoke about you know when uh, the uh, so called illiterate uh, ayas uh, you essentially figured out that the skill that they were lacking was the ability to connect their ability to let's say do rangoli right. with right. Uh, you know the patterns of the alphabets so yeah. you know in a sense it's essentially upon incumbent upon the teacher or the educator to construct skills and to figure out you know what are those components of the skills which a person already has and kind of take it forward from there So it just seemed like a very simple example, and you know when I when I heard, heard you uh, speak about uh, this example, then you know I'm thinking why is it that anybody who knows how to do art, for example, is still it illiterate and you know cannot write? And right. I mean that simple thought can be so powerful, and it can be you know uh, world changing for all the uh, illiterate people out there. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh, I think as you said, you know it's a shift and. this one uh, example that you gave and i hope you know this happens can bring about a shift in a way a lot of educators are thinking about you know how they are teaching because unfortunately when it comes to education uh, because of the demand supply situation or because the way we have been programmed or conditioned uh, yeah. we are just following the rat race and we are not you know thinking hard enough we are just thinking about how to get you know 90% or these days you know 99 or 95% yeah so so that's fascinating i'm sure you know the audience got a lot of value uh, from uh, your experiences your uh, thoughts on so many different subjects and we were able to connect everything together but uh, you know to wrap it up what's the one piece of advice that you would give to people who are maybe have at the back of their minds a thought that you know they should do something in a particular area or something should change in a particular domain which probably is an indicator of the fact that this domain is their why it is their calling but they look at it from a distance they don't you know really get into it and then they are unhappy leading their you know 9 to 5 or 9 to 9 sort of lifestyle so you know what is it that you would advise to such people how can they go about kind of shifting the paradigm of their lives see my only advice to uh i was thinking that when you will ask me an advice i'll specially give to the school leaders but yes advice to everybody is that you know sometimes we feel that uh when you want to change and when you want to do contribution when you want to do something which is feels nice you have to do it at a, it is a very external thing and something which is very big right. you know you have to really change everything i just want to tell you you don't have to start everything with lot of sacrifices in life right. even if you are in a school you don't have to change your whole system even if you are in a corporate world you don't have to change whole of your what that you know like you put your i have to go to gym and i have to go to gym for my body change and your fitness there is nothing like that there is a simple commitment a kind of a commitment which is a one step i'm sure everywhere we are reading this one step in a day right so there is nothing 
at sacrifice level i have to leave my job or i have to do this or i have to pay the whole system no my advice is that just have one thing that is commitment to yourself renew your vow every day because when you renew your vow that is your vow i'm talking about your why like when i say that i want to do something i do not know find it out do it at the micro level at a very cellular level just one thing it may be just one piece of post every day a one piece of connect of contribution with a lot of people who want help organizations also who want help you can find that one thing which will be like a drop of ocean every single day but i tell you when you start doing that and don't feel it's so big every single day one step is going to set you for a long journey right then you don't have to worry that one day what will give me the courage of doing it nothing nothing external has to come out to you to do something it is all within it is all within and uh, usually people get scared or think because when we read articles you see when we read articles of the change because sometimes it's like oh god we can't do it right. we did it we can't do it then it's like oh they started a very young like my my age is only gone nothing right. every time the now is ours right. one step is ours commitment to ourselves is also ours actually we just have to connect to our own self forget everything one step in a day find that one step right and that little time i'm sure everybody if you are saying that i don't have that one step i'm sure you are doing a mismanagement join the course of self management with me right. because i'm sure you'll find that one step every day and i'm i'm 100% sure the initiative is going to set a good long journey for you right yeah, yeah absolutely and you know if uh, people are watching the video up to this point in time then uh, it's very easy you know we are in the moment we are in the now hold yourself uh, accountable and mention in the comments what's the one thing that you want to do and what's the change that you are associated with i think you know once you put it out in the public domain uh, automatically you will hold yourself to a higher level of accountability because you know the world now knows uh, you know what your why is and what your area and you always not need to be for impact you know when you yourself become an inspiration like 20 years back if i left an instrument and i took a time time to start myself today this is a very big a journey for you to share with the world that right. yes like you shared initially i got inspired when you said that i did a self reflection every time this is this is not uh, small to do these small steps is a very important thing find out your call and right. i'm sure each one of us can find that one step of our day right Definitely. yeah absolutely and in a way you know you're also would be sharing your experiences and you know that's what our platform is all about uh, our uh, discussion unleash with ftm essentially what we're trying to do is bring about experiences of people uh, put it in the public domain so that people can listen to it you know learn from it take maybe you know a fraction of the elements but even if there is one element that you are able to absorb that causes a shift in your thinking and changes the direction of your life of society of you know any element of the world uh, i think you know we would have uh, done a great service and uh, justice absolutely absolutely the time that we're spending on the planet so uh, if you like these thoughts then make sure that you know the liking also reflects on uh, youtube in the form of a like to this video because you know we are living in an algorithmic driven world and uh, these things do matter do subscribe to the channel do comment as we mentioned about you know what is the one thing that you want to what is the one takeaway that you took from this conversation uh, and uh, with that uh, suprabha so thank you so much for sharing your thoughts on so many different aspects it's been a it's been a great pleasure uh, listening to you and absorbing so many things about education and our day to day lives thank you thank you rajiv and thank you for inviting me and i'll really look forward for you to have greater impact with the wonderful success of this youtube channel because definitely this is a wonderful way of reaching out people and connecting people to people that's right. what i am doing as a connect part and that's what you are doing so i'm really really happy and many congratulations to you and good luck thank you thank you everybody yeah thank you and for the audience uh, the link to uh, suprabha's venture as well as to our website from the experts mouth.com will be given in the description and the comments so you can go out and you know check out uh, some of the thoughts that we mentioned in greater detail 
uh, the key aspects of this conversation will also be culled out and put in the form of a post on our website. So you can visit that uh, in the times to come. Uh, and with that, uh, thank you once again, Suprabha. And uh, see you in the next episode of Unleash with Empty. Thank you.